You're listening to Cash and Sass. I'm Lisa Marie, your go-to gal for all things money. As the Sassy Wealth Queen and the brains behind the Sassy Wealth Coach, I'm here to take you on a thrilling ride from the financial chaos to sassy and sexy money. Welcome back, my sassy friend, to another episode of Cash and Sass. I'm your host, Lisa Marie. I'm the Sassy Wealth Queen, the brains behind the Sassy Wealth Coach, and your host. And today we're diving into one of my favorite topics, this wealth, physical wealth code. Before we get started, let me ask you a question. Have you ever noticed how when you're feeling good physically, everything else just seems to fall into place? Your mind is clearer, your energy is higher, you're able to tackle challenges with ease. But when you're run down and stress out, neglecting your health is like, uh, and you're neglecting your health, it's like trying to swim upstream. Everything feels harder than it needs to be. That's why I'm such a big, huge believer in the physical wealth code. Because when you make your health a top priority, a top priority, you're not just investing in your body, you're investing in your overall success and happiness. Now, I know that some of you might be thinking, but I don't have time to focus on my health. I'm too busy building my empire, running my business. I'm running around with my kids, all the things. And believe me, I get it. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how easy it is to let self-care fall by the wayside, okay? I, I know how easy it is to fall into the everyday activities and to keep pursuing our goals. And then later I catch myself letting those things go and not taking care of myself. And when I do, I look to see, okay, what did I stop doing? And then I try and get back to it. Because here's the thing, neglecting your physical health is like trying to build a house on shaky foundation. I'm going to say that again. Neglecting your physical health is like trying to build a house on shaky foundation. Sure, you might be able to make some progress in the short term, but eventually those cracks are going to start showing. And that's when everything comes tumbling down. I want to share something with you. I learned this lesson the hard way a few years back. It was right after I started my business. I shared that I was let go from my corporate job. I was miserable. I was having migraine headaches the whole nine yards. I'd spent the first year focusing nothing on my business because I knew I did not want to go back to corporate. Here's the thing. I was literally working myself into a ground, surviving on nothing but caffeine and adrenaline and putting my health on the back burner. I was concentrating on building my business and taking care of my girls. I put myself at the bottom of the bottom and I was miserable. I wasn't taking care of myself. And it wasn't until one day in my early 40s. So I started my business 43. So we'll say, I think it was like 44. When I had a hard time getting up off the floor from playing with my daughter, that I had this huge wake up moment. And when I say it was a huge wake up moment, I was mentally I mentally and physically, I was unhappy with myself. I was unhealthy in so many ways and very unhealthy mentally. Okay? I, just, I was down in the dumps. It just wasn't a good place. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I want you to understand that when we don't take care of our physical health, just like I said just a minute ago, everything comes tumbling down. So I knew then, okay, this needs to stop. My family has a history of all kinds of health issues in and out of the hospital. I was 44. And I had a young child. I did not want something to happen to me. I wanted to be able to play with my kid. So I reached out because I knew I needed someone who would hold me accountable. I knew I needed someone that would push me. And I knew someone that knew someone and they introduced me and told me who to go to. And I reached out to her and working through with my fitness coach is where I discovered the physical wealth code, where I discovered being wealthy physically is everything. And we started where I was at. I started small, making consistent small changes in my daily habits, things like prioritizing sleep, eating more whole foods, moving my body. And you know what? It isn't always easy. There are days I still don't want to do it. And I, t I use what I call workout language every day. And it's so worth it. I feel better physically and mentally. Remember the second wealth code? 
right? Mental wealth code coincides with that physical wealth code, which is the reason why I created these wealth codes because they all coincide. And so as I started feeling better physically, I noticed, I noticed something. It took me a little bit to notice, but I noticed something. My business started thriving as well because I had more energy to show up for my clients. I had more energy to pour into my projects. I had more energy to network. And I had the resilience to bounce back from setbacks because again, life is going to happen, right? So you're probably asking, okay, Lisa, how can I start? What, what are some of the things I can do? How can I have, you know, start embodying that physical wealth code in my own life? Well, here are a few tips to get you started. And they're going to seem very simple and no brainers. And I also know that they're very, it's sometimes it can be very hard to change some of these habits. So I encourage you to do one at a time. Just pick one out of the five that I'm going to give you and do it for three weeks, four weeks, two months, and then add another one. Because again, the small, consistent steps is what adds up, okay? One, prioritize your sleep. Now, everybody and anybody says you need eight hours. I'm not telling you to get eight hours of quality sleep. I'm telling you to make sure you get quality sleep. For me, I know I need between six to seven. If I get six to six and a half of good sleep, I'm good. Okay. So my average is between six to seven. And I know that I figured it out and I know that's what I need. But create a relaxing bedtime routine. You know, keep your, uh, I don't have a TV anymore. I don't let a TV be in my bedroom. I will take a nice hot bath or I'll read a book with a nightlight um, or a soft light. And then I now listen to music and then I go to bed. Okay, so having that routine, eat for energy, focus on your whole foods and keep, um, I eat six small meals a day so that I don't eat really huge, large meals. Now, I am not going to tell you to go and never have what my favorite thing, sweet tea. <laughs> never going to tell you never to have that. I'm never going to tell you to not eat any sugar, or any fat, or stay away from all the things. I'm not going to do that because, again, it doesn't work. I cut back on my sweet tea, and I'm okay with that. I've cut back on other things, and I eat a lot more whole, nutrient-dense foods. And I still enjoy a really good pizza, and I still enjoy ice cream. And I still have my, my sweet tea, but I do it in moderation and I eat more of the good whole foods, okay? Find movement, move, 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 okay? I don't care what that is. Go for a walk, go for a hike, um, whatever type of movement. Go to the gym. For me, I don't like gyms. I feel very uncomfortable in them. So hiring a fitness trainer so that I could basically have my own gym in my home and work from home works because if it rains or if it's cold, I'm going to come up with excuses and reasons not to go. I know me, that I've done it. And I needed to be able to bypass that part so I didn't have that excuse. I don't always like working out. <laughs> I'll be the first to tell you. It's not always easy. And I love how I feel afterwards. So I can't stress to you how just moving is everything. When it's nice and sunny outside, I am outside walking. I love the natural vitamin D and it does something for you. Okay? So find some movement, even if it's 10 minutes a day. If you, haven't, if you haven't moved in a long time, go walk for 10 minutes a day and then gradually increase it. Four, manage your stress. Yes, I know. Easier said than done. I'm still a work in progress. Make time for self, for relaxation and self-care every day. Um, whether it's meditation, deep breathing, or journaling to help you stay centered. Me, I have a new way. And it's from someone that um, is actually uh, already been on the podcast. Um, and she has shown me movement through dance and how to work all that stuff through my body. And then I'm able to uh, journal and I listen to meditation at night and become centered. And sometimes I'm listening to it while I read or sometimes I'm writing, 
my wins for the day while I'm listening to it. And it's just bringing me centered before I go to sleep. And I have made this part of my routine. I am working on making the dancing and the morning uh, meditation with journaling more of my routine as well. And again, I'm starting small. I'm doing one thing at a time. Okay. So those are things, those just finding something to help you stay centered and, and keep you going when things don't always go easy. The fifth thing is stay hydrated. Plenty of water throughout your day. Now, I'm a big water drinker now. <laughs> Seven years ago when I started working with my trainer, not so much. <laughs> um, so again, uh, we didn't, she didn't immediately say, okay, start drinking 30 ounces of water a day and start working out five days a week. We didn't do that. We did one thing at a time. And we didn't focus on the water at first. We focused on other things at first, one thing at a time. And then water was one of those things. And we focused on just it. Because if you focus on one thing at a time and you gradually uh, build your um, the routine and add these things in it, they become habits. And so then you can add something else. But having these things will help you with that physical wealth code. And y'all, I cannot stress to you how much you will feel, not even physically, but also mentally. And then you're also able to um, build that mental wealth code as well. Okay. I want you to remember that investing in your physical health is one of the best things you can do for overall wealth and happiness. You have one body. One. Take care of it. It's not always easy. And it's so worth it. So here's my challenge for you for this week. You ready? (laughs) Pick one small way to start embodying the physical wealth code into your daily life. Again, just one, okay? Maybe that's committing to an earlier bedtime. Maybe that's committing to trying a new healthy recipe or going for a walk. Whatever it is, make it doable and make it a non-negotiable part of your routine, but start with one. And then if you need a little extra motivation, remember this. When you're operating from a place of physical wealth, there is no limit to what you can achieve. I'm going to say that again. There's no limit to what you can achieve because you've got the energy, you've got the clarity and the resilience to take on the world. That, my friends, is true wealth. Honest to goodness. Okay, that's it for today's episode of Cash and Sass. Remember, Your health is your greatest asset. So physical wealth code is tremendously important. Start treating it like a valuable investment that it is. Until next time, stay sassy and stay wealthy. Bye. Thanks for joining us this week on Cash and Sass. Check us out on social media and on our website at www.thesassywealthcoach.com where you can download my free Money Story Start Guide. The website again is www.thesassywealthcoach.com. And as always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to bring you fresh content. And remember, yes, it is possible to have sassy and sexy money. See you next week.